tend to take life for granted. We're used to living constantly amid all manner of human-made life. We seldom reflect on the fact that most, for most of human history, our only sources of light came from the sky and from fire. We easily forgot that there was a time when torches were a new invention, oil lamps were valued possessions, and chandlers toiled so people could see in the night by candlelight. <coughs> Our ancestors bedded down at nightfall for the most part. Of necessity, they lived their lives finely attuned to nature's cycle of light and dark, and then later the cycles of sowing and reaping. They knew that their lives depended upon the sun, so they created rituals to ensure its annual return. In fact, marking the return of the light was so important to them that for at least 5,000 years ago, some of our Western European ancestors built megaliths such as Brunaboyne in Ireland and Mays Howe in Scotland. Brunaboyne, or Newgrange, is a mound near the Boyne River, named for Bowen, a cow goddess, comprised of a passage leading to inner chambers carved with spiral designs. The builders constructed the mound so that the light of the rising sun on midwinter morning shines a shaft of sunlight deep into the inside to illuminate the innermost chambers, just for about 10 or 15 minutes. Although only a limited number of people can experience this remarkable occurrence from within the mound, today, in the cyber age, millions of viewers can see this phenomenon live on solstice morn from anywhere in the world by a webcam placed inside the mound. Some ancestors decorated their dwellings with evergreens. They cut a tree and decorated its branches with twinkling little candles. Today, if we're ecologically minded, as we should be, we use strings of LED lights. <laughs> this tree represented the world tree that unites the underworld, the middle world, and the upper world, and it never dies. I think humans are hardwired to gather around fires, especially during the long nights of winter. Our ancestors gathered around the Yule log, Yule is a Scandinavian word, usually taken to mean wheel, to keep warm through the long, cold, longest night of the year as they sat together while bards and elders told stories, musicians played, and people sang and danced, ate and drank. Somewhat like the Salvation Army and other charities do today, for those with fewer means, the poorer folk trekked from household to household singing wassail songs in exchange for hot wassail and bread and other food. We pagans, at least the majority of us, view the winter solstice as the night when our great mother labors to bring forth the reborn sun god. We see in images of Mary and the baby Jesus something ancient and primal, an icon that speaks to us. In my tradition, we gather on the beach at sunset on the longest night of the year, and as the sun goes down over the waves, we all plunge into the ocean as a ritual purification. And it's cold, but it's mm -hmm. colder than some of the summer soul. <laughs> <laughs> then we turn to warm up at a big waiting bonfire in the sand. Later, we return to homes, often lots of us in one home, where we sing Yule carols, light candles, drink hot brews, we feast and eat sun cookies that children have baked. We gather near the fireplace telling and listening to stories, playing games, perhaps doing divination. As dawn approaches, we go outside and gather in the high places around the Bay Area and sing and sing and sing up the sun. Often in the rain, but always we can see the lightning skies. When we perform these acts, when we sing the carols, trim our trees, light candles, we reenact the things our ancestors did, and we reconnect with them, and we honor our heritage. Celebrating midwinter together allows us to reaffirm the continuance of life. 
In the spirit of the season, I'd like to teach you a little chant as a Yule gift from pagans to the interfaith community. <laughs> the words are by American poet E.E. E. Cummings. I don't know who made the chant into work, uh, the chant of those words, but we've been using it for the past 30 plus years and it seems to be working fine. So I'll always come back. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, four lines. I'll not sing it through. And I can sing it more if we want to, but I know we're short on time, so we're going for now. I, who have died, am alive again today, and this is the sun's birthday. This is the birthday of life and love and wings, and the gay, gray happening illimitably earth. I wish you all a joyous solstice, warmed by the loving hearts of friends and family in a toasty fire. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I have the strong singers, uh, Bethany I'm looking at, those of you that are strong singers voice-wise, come up front and then we're going to make a circle around the bima with all the lights and we're going to sing the last uh, uh, chant or song on the back. So, and Ma is bringing some of her tambourine. So we're going to make a circle around the bima. Those of you that can stand, those of you that want to stay seated, that's okay, but the rest of you, I'd, I'd like to make one circle, not, not multiple.